Mmm, that's good hot chocolate. Let's talk about this. My uh, prototype L85A3. Uh, so at the moment this is all done in uh, 3D printed parts, but hopefully this should be uh, available in metal at some point. So, let's talk about the key reasons behind why I wanted to do this. Well, one, uh, I'm a big fan of the L85s, so it's evident by me the five or so SA80s I have sitting around this room. Um, also, I, uh, I'm i lucky enough to work in a sector which let me uh, attend a show called DSCI, um, big defence show in London every two years, and Heckler and & Coke were there and they had the prototype L85A3s which I got to ogle and fondle and play with and uh, I thought yeah this is quite nice. We need an airsoft version of this. And here it is, the L85A3 conversion kit. So, the cool parts of this rifle. You've got the main handguard rail section, you've got the top scope rail section, and then you've got the mounting block for this. So, I tried to make this as close to the uh, rail that the MOD are adopting. So, uh, uh, we've got the later version 2 rows of slots up here. Fun tidbit, the original prototypes had just big holes up here and uh, what happened was some squaddies went out and field tested them and hang on, beating this hand, gripped the rifle and put their fingers through those holes and then got ouchies when they fired the rifle and the working part cycled and spat out hot gas at them. So uh, that design's now been changed to the uh, uh, dual hole, so you can't get your fingers in there and can't get ouchies from it. Now, the A3 variant is a step forward again for the SA80 platform, as it moves away from having a uh, rail system that mounts to the glass block of the rifle. Uh, and that means that, although it technically it isn't, is pretty much a free float barrel so from here onwards the barrel is does not touch um, touch the handguard so putting force on the handguard doesn't put force on the barrel and therefore doesn't change the point of impact You've got to do what you shouldn't do which is lay the rifle down on its charging handle and then uh, just going to unscrew this so it's just a single flathead screw and you just unscrew it loose and it should just drop out at the moment and the rail should slide off. Now again, there are some kind of, some tweaks to the design I need to make because it does get caught up on the gas block, gas parts a bit, but you just need to wiggle it off and then off that rail slides and that is the rail segment. Right. 1300 11 one stick lipo. And that will fit happily in this gap here so you can uh, fit that in and get the rail over it uh, again I've updated this part yeah so the later versions will have about a centimetre more room so this will be back by a centimetre because it doesn't need to go any further forwards than this mounting block here um, and therefore you have slightly more space to work with uh, and again if you lose gas blocks uh, you use glass box and working part from this. With a bit of careful finagling, you can fit a uh, 2600 11 1 um, butterfly nunchuck battery in there. So the G&G rail mounted onto the rifle using three mounting 
lugs that go into the receiver and then are screwed on from the inside. Um, which is a nice secure design, very strong on there. However, both the ICS and the Wii Tech versions use through rail bolts going into the receiver. Um, which means that they require a different design top rail. This is a some generic aftermarket ICS uh, Picatinny rail adapter. <coughs> the actual rail, there we go, mounts on here. Now you can see there are three holes in it, and that's because WeTech and ICS have different positions for their mounting holes. So I've made one rail that can mount to either of them. And hopefully that should bring down the costs of the kits a bit, as we will then only need to make two sight rails for the three brands, as opposed to three sight rails for the three brands, which hopefully should save everyone a bit of cash. Um, but yeah, they mount onto the upper receivers and replace the original dovetail rail. Now the uh, the nice thing about this kit is it doesn't require any permanent modifications to the rifle, so. For instance, this um, this mounting block is only held in place by these two lugs, or these two bolts, which bolt through the first lightning cut hole in the uh, upper receiver. And both the G and G, uh, both the ICS and the WE, just uh, replace a part that was already there and attached with already existing grub screws or um, sorry, torque already existing screws. Um, so this is the WeTech mount for it. Um, it replaces this part and uh, the ICS version replaces this part. Now the G&G &G doesn't actually replace any parts, it just slots in over because the, the front of the receiver is actually a welded piece so it slots into that. Hence why it has this weird kind of fin design but um, this 3D printed version is a bit weak. This nylon version is much stronger and uh, hopefully getting these made in metal will make them even stronger. But as you've seen, I can pick this up by the rail and wave it around and there's no issues with it whatsoever. Uh, that's one of the things I aim to do was make sure that this is a reversible process. So if you don't want to run the A3 version anymore, you can switch back. The, the, the hardest part of this is taking your gas block off. Unless you've got an army armament which uses just a grub screw and falls off and normally just comes falling off, um, you're going to have to tap out some roll pins. But once they're out, the gas box slides off easily and you can put it back on at some point and rehammer this in, in place um, and put your gas box back on. Um, and just for reference, let's put this battery in so you can see it fitted. So again, the the, uh, the final version, the, the production version, will have a bit more battery space to make this a bit easier. Um, and you don't have to tangle it over the gas block as much. This is all just down to me forgetting that gas parts existed when I did this version. Um, there we go. That's in. Get the... Uh, Wire tucked in over the balance lead. Should tuck in halfway. There we go. And slide that out. Then we can turn it over. Get a bolt in. And away we go. There it is. And there we go. That is one ready to rock. Page five. Now, I know this is clear, this doesn't have any BBs in, but there you go. For proof, that's all wired up properly and working. All good. And I will say that is a fair sight easier than doing it with a DD rail. Um, and here we have the ICS. But again, with the ICS, just in case of slide it on, make sure your wires are out of the way. Yeah. Oop. the wires are out of the way, push it in, and then bolt in, and do it up. Uh, 
and there it is on the ICS. Now the uh, the mounting box still needs a few bits of tweaks, so it's sitting at a slight want, but uh, I am working on that. But I thought I'd just show you what I've got up to so far. I do have to admit, I do quite like the look of the A3 LSW version. Hang on, let's try and... I do like the long barrel on it, it looks quite nice. Um, but yeah, there's the kit mounted up on the ICS. I haven't got around to making a gas box for this yet. Uh, but, maybe leave a comment, what do you think? Do you need the gas block for it, or uh, are you happy just to run it without the gas block? Because uh, again, battery space. Um, so just to prove it fits, there it is sitting in the end. So you can just slide further down inside there. Obviously not with a gas block in, that's that's a thing. That will limit your battery space, but then there you go. There is there is the battery pack, and that will fit happily in this rail. So if you want unlimited firepower, there you go. And for complete sake, here is the WE. Just it. That is definitely the gas blowback variant. Um, and once again, there is the rail mounted on it. Um, button. I don't have the sight rail on here because I've only printed one so far and it's currently mounted on the um, ICS. One A5A3 gas blowback WE. So I said I'd talk about the key modi situation. Um, now, when I designed this, I was an idiot. Uh, I looked at this rail and assumed that this key mod looking section here is key mod. Um, and uh, I then designed the rail with key mod and thought, mm, that doesn't look quite right, so I'll just shorten this bit here because I don't know how key mod works. I've only ever really used Picatinny or even Dovetail. Those are kind of the only two mounting options I've used. Um, and I just assumed that the key part was making sure you had a lug that fit through there. I didn't realise that it actually had a retaining lug and it locks it all in place so it's all zeroed up each time you put it back on. Um, so I just shortened the length of that uh, locking groove. Um, so this doesn't work with key mod. <laughs> End of. Um, so I redesigned the rail and I made two versions. I made a version that's got actual key mod sizing on it and I've got a version that inspired by HK, which is HK's own version, which because they don't think key mod's the best. Um, and funnily enough, they don't give out the measurements for HK. So I designed my own version and that's what this is. And this is with a rail segment mounted up. I think I'm going to call it E key for English Kiwi key. Um, and effectively it is pretty similar to H key and key mod in the fact that you have a lug that fits through a big opening in the rail section and then tightens into a smaller uh, section in the rail section. So uh, what I've done is I've chamfered We'll put put a fill yeah put a chamfer on in the uh, inside of the key section and there is a chamfer on these locking pins. Now these locking pins I should move this out of the way. So this is just a slice as you can see. It's this slice of the rail. You can even see the little notch there is the beginning of that opening there. These locking pins don't look the best, um, and that's because they're 3D printed, and 3D printing small things like these is quite hard. But they're doing the job to demo, which is all right by me. But yeah, so the way EQ works, I'm going to call it EQ now, uh, is it goes in, sides over, so these sit over there, little chamfer points, and then you tighten it down, and those pegs will locate themselves into the chamfer and pull everything into into line. Now, of course, as I show you this, the peg has broken, so it's got a little locking lug, so it can't spin 
when you're tightening up the screws it can only go in and out laterally but uh, that's what that is um, again these are 3d printed parts so they're not the final ones aren't going to be 3d printed if i make these they'll be metal lugs but that's the idea they they don't rotate so you can tighten away and it will lock the rail segment onto the rail and not only will it lock the rail segment onto the rail it will um, pull it back into a known location by tightening down into the chamfer so you can see there that these lugs that are breaking up have pulled themselves down into the chamfer and locked into the chamfer so hopefully this rail segment should be relocatable to that same position every time um, and again these won't be 3D printed on the final ones, these will be machined out of aluminium, just like these will be machined out of aluminium. Now, in terms of how I'm going to make these, uh, I'm still not 100% sure, but I am going to a meeting this week. Um, I'm going to go down and meet with a acquaintance of mine, a friend of mine, and uh, he uh, he is good friends with a machine shop owner and so we're going to meet and have a discussion and go go over my designs and see how feasible they are for them to make if not there are other options but i prefer to go with someone i know is good it will we'll be able to make these um so i shall be reporting back on that fairly soon but hopefully we can get these finalized and uh, into production hopefully soon Yes, so if you want to stay up to date on this project, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel. Um, that will keep you up to date on this one, and also uh, the other random things I'm doing and working on. Um, also, if you haven't already, go and join my Facebook page, the link should be in the bio below, um, because I will be posting on there a lot more regularly than I am posting videos, uh, so that should be the most up to date, and that's my Instagram page. Um, also, I will be putting polls up there, as I have done in previously, about this and uh, trying to get your thoughts and opinions on it. Um, so I think that about covers everything. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys around. You're still here? But the... The video's over. It's done. Go go home. Oh wait, before you do, um, instead why don't you consider watching one of my other videos or even uh, subscribing on the link down below.